So the power rankings for week five are in. Um, pretty happy with the results, to be fair, compared to some other weeks where there's been a huge jump. Things are, are looking a bit better. Um, please keep in mind it's not as simple as just, well, you've got four wins and you've got three wins, so this team has to be on top. Uh, there's a few factors like home and away, what the losses have been like, what the score lines have been like to determine kind of who's on top. Who's not on top? And staking a claim to permanent spot in 15 is the Sunwolves. Uh, they are none from four. Um, their loss against the Lions wasn't too bad, but um, I'm not too bad. Loss is only going to see you drop a little less rather than bring you up. So you need to get a win to really start climbing unless the team above you is um, kind of losing so horrendously that they just push down further. The team trying to do that, apparently, is the Jaguares, so they also lost. Uh, theirs was at home, which was probably a bit worse, uh, and by more points, so early on in the season, it looks like it's going to be these two fighting it out for 14th and 15th, uh, whether any of them can kind of string some results together to kind of move up the table. Right now, anyway, it looks... It looks unlikely, but we'll see. It's still a long competition. We're only uh, five weeks in. So these two teams not moving from their last week's results, but this team is moving down to, and it's the Bulls. The Bulls have had a pretty dramatic drop from the top to the bottom of the board. Um, started with a good win against the Hurricanes at home, and then it's just been three losses on the trot. So they're kind of paying the price for that. Um, it's not all doom and gloom, their performance levels have kind of been alright, but um, just the results not there at the moment. So, uh, kind of confident that they'll bounce back, but um, yeah, they need to do the thing on the field. 1-4 and four record is probably going to have you towards the bottom of the table. Speaking of 1-4 and four record, the Blues. After a good win last week against the Lions, they've had a disappointing loss against the Stormers, so... Uh, sees them back down two spots to the bottom row. So yeah, same thing, one and four record. Can't really give you much credit for anything other than that. Um, but yeah, we've got a New Zealand team, a South African team, Argentinian team, Japanese team. The only team we're lacking is an Australian team. Although we do have the Australian conference represented. Next, and down four. And four spots is the biggest shift this week. Uh, the Sharks. Uh, kind of paying the price for their loss. Their their record goes from being dead even at a win, a, lo a loss, and a draw to being negative. So, uh, yeah, two losses now for the Sharks. A pretty disappointing one in a game that they would have been targeting on their tour because things don't get any easier. So, could be a few long weeks for the Sharks. We will see how they go. Uh, up three spots. The Brumbies. The Brumbies have now evened out their record, so they go up the table. Uh, two and two. So, bouncing back after two losses, they've gotten a win at home. Finally back at home. So, first home game of the season. Brumbies did the business. Um, coach largely said that, you know, being at home is very important. So, uh, I'll probably do a video a little bit about the stats of home and away and who's kind of had that advantage so far this season, but that'll be for another one. For now, the Brumbies are 2-2, two and two, so they are in 10th. Next, and up 3. So the Stormers are in 9th, because they've just got their second one. So their record, uh, 2 wins, 3 losses. Um, you know, kind of doesn't look pretty. Still on the negative side, but uh, their 3 losses were on tour, so 3 away losses, kind of. Uh, some of them to be expected against Crusaders and Highlanders. Good win against the Blues in conditions where... You know, with injuries and illness and whatnot, they were kind of expected to be challenged, uh, kind of against a resurgent Blues team. But they did the business and they did it comfortably, so good on the Stormers. Next, and I should mention that 6, 7 and 8 are all really pretty much dead even, so um, that they, they could interchange uh, between themselves. But I've put the Waratahs at 8, so the Waratahs record now 2 wins, 1 loss, 1 draw. Uh, they've gone up one spot. Uh, good win for them over the Rebels. Really big win. Uh, kind of their first 
really impressive result of the season because their first win over the Stormers was lucky, you know, kind of one last play at the end got them over the line so they didn't get a draw. Their result against the Sharks as a draw away was still good, but no one's going to get that pumped up about a draw. And their loss against the Jaguars away was really disappointing. So first really like proper big result for the Waratahs. So that sees them in eighth, rounding up the second row. Uh, the third row uh, I have got in seventh, the Chiefs. So the Chiefs have only played three games, two wins and a loss. The loss was away against the Crusaders, so we won't count that against them too much. But a win away against the Blues, a win at home against the Bulls. Like I said, who were, um, you know, who pushed them. But a uh, good result they got it in the end. Even with the injuries they've got, they're still getting the results. So come the end of the season, the Chiefs could be dangerous once they get some of their big names, big names back. Another team with kind of injury issues is the Crusaders. They are down three spots into sixth. So their record is also even, two wins and two losses. Uh, their two wins have been pretty impressive at home. And their two losses have been away against strong New Zealand opposition. So that's probably why they're still at the upper end of the table despite having an even record. So um, yeah, uh, things will keep developing and they'll keep shifting. If, if, they, um, if they go into negative territory, they will drop. So don't worry about that. Um, but like I said, realistically, they could be an eighth based on uh, the way I've worked things out. So yeah, it's kind of uh, much of a muchness between them. In fifth and up one, Reds. The Reds are the one team you could argue that I'm not giving them kind of, um, you know, pay for the work they're putting in because their record is three wins and one loss. So, you know, strong record if you look at that. Uh, the wins they've been getting haven't been really dramatic. They've been kind of gritty wins. So I might be... Um, you know, not giving them that little boost that they could be getting if they were really blowing teams away. They're not looking spectacular, but they are looking solid. And winning rugby is good rugby, and that's the rugby they're playing. So uh, if they can keep picking up the wins, then they will keep going up the board. Next, and no change in fourth, having had a bye, are the Hurricanes. So the Hurricanes have got a record of two wins and a loss. Uh, their one loss was away and very narrow, and then they've had... Um, a big away win and a decent home win over strong opposition. So I'll put them at fourth. Um, their record's still pretty uh, early on, given they've only played three games, similar to the Chiefs. Um, so yeah, they'll, they'll need to get some results to, to maintain that spot because the further the season goes, the less results you have, or the more results you have, the more kind of fair reflection we get of your actual performance. And third, and dropping two spots, the Rebels didn't remain in that top spot for long. So they were number one last week. They've dropped two to third. Uh, yeah, really dramatic turnaround for them after kind of coming out of the blocks like lightning. They've just had a big blip on their, on their road. So yeah, disappointing result for the Rebels, but it was away. So uh, it's not the end of the world. They still get to go home next week and... Um, push for another result so they're not out of the top row yet but they will need to get a result uh, next week because the teams behind them are closing the gap uh, in second so no change for the lions uh, they got a win sure but it was um it was at home and it was narrow and it was against weak opposition so we're not going to give them much credit for that there's no way they're pushing for first um, but you know second shows that they're still a team with a a four win, one loss record, so it's um, that's still pretty good. And in number one for the first time this season is the Highlanders, the only unbeaten team in Super Rugby. Uh, got a three from three record, so up four spots uh, into first. Um, yeah, get excited if you're a Highlanders fan because your team's looking pretty good, but be aware that you know you've played three home games, haven't left Dunedin yet, so. Uh, it's kind of been a, a nice, I mean, the opposition's been tough, but it's been a nice way to start the season at home. I mean, the bye kind of could have come at a more convenient time. It was a bit of a stuttering start having to go over the bye, but still sleeping in your own beds and, you know, training at familiar facilities and whatnot. Um, 
yeah, it seems to have worked for them. So they start their on-the-road season next week. We'll see if they're able to maintain it. But yep, that's my power rankings for week five. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Uh, like I said, there are some teams that you could argue should be a bit higher and a bit lower, but this is what I've gone with. Uh, yeah, if your opinion differs, feel free to let me know. I always enjoy reading the comments. So um, yeah, uh, let me know and I'll talk to you guys again soon.